in present times phaco emulsification is the choice of surgery for removal of cataract and the reason is that it has so many advantages and the patients are more comfortable with it however the only concern is that these patients who have hard cataract may have loss of endothelial cells and that becomes one relative contraindications today we'll see this case who had a hard cataract this is the fundus photograph and this is the point where the surgery has been started a corneal incision has been made and as we can see it's a nuclear sclerosis kind of cataract and these cataracts they retain their glow or the retroillumination is still possible however we can see the vacuoles or the lakes in the cataract which are responsible for the polyopia which has been described as one of the symptoms the capsular excess is usually not very challenging because in these patients the capsule loses its elasticity which is there in the younger age and hence the capsule is torn easily without any tendency for peripheral extension or spiraling out adequate size capsular excess has been performed and now proceeding on to making a side port i don't use a lance tip knife rather i prefer a mvr blade which is symmetrical and it provides you the extension on both the edges once the side port has been designed with the presence of the viscoelastic you drain out the viscoelastic and then do a hydro dissection which will help in separating the epinucleus the cortex and the capsule hard cataracts is a problem because most of us are not aware that using more or adequate power is the key removing the overlying cortex so that the bare nucleus is in front of us and the burst mode is the choice here because it provides you a burst of 100% power which is adequate to bury in such hard cataracts now the problem is that if you don't use this adequate amount of power in these cases a small amount of power will simply waste the power prolong the surgery and cause endothelial decompensation i have found that instead of the total power used inside the eye the proximity of the nucleus to the endothelium is the major factor which causes loss of endothelial cells and next day keratitis once we have done the primary chop we can ramp up the illumination which was kept undue so that the patient didn't have glare and we have now chopped these pieces using horizontal chop technique into four quadrants now watch as i remove each quadrant i further chop it and this is one of the key factors in my experience the only factor which causes endothelial cell damage is rubbing of the nuclear fragments over the endothelium and this is due to two reasons one because of a shallow ac and i think a threshold can be defined as 2.8 mm so if any anterior chamber depth is less than 2.8 mm sics should be the preferred technique another issue is if you have adequate depth and still you have a large and a bulky and a hard nucleus the way to handle it is is cracking it into very very small pieces or chunks what is that is what i am doing here instead of dissecting or emulsifying the quadrants i am chopping them further into smaller pieces and these pieces will occupy less volume they will protrude less into the anterior chamber and as a result they will not touch the endothelium which i have experienced is a major reason why you have next step post op corneal decompensation and keratitis once we have removed whole of the nucleus a very thin film of epinucleus is left behind which can be safely removed using the phaco tip which will be more efficient filling up the anterior chamber with little amount of dispersive viscoelastic to coat the endothelium and then proceeding on to remove this cortex which is very little in amount but still it is significant and more so this is a delicate job 
because you have to peel this cortex away from the capsule without any damage to the capsule. So the best way is to engage the lens fibers at the capsular excess border and then peel them away so that you don't have to reach up to the posterior capsule to remove them. sub area has to be very carefully handled so that you don't touch the posterior capsule because the visibility is limited and one may actually damage the posterior capsule. Once the anterior chamber has been filled with viscoelastic gel, it's time to implant the intraocular lens. And here this is a hydrophilic monofocal lens and it goes directly into the back. Those injector tips which are narrower can be introduced inside the eye in such a way that they simply open the eye well in the bag and you don't need to dial it. Removing the viscoelastic gel and also notice that we'll have a posterior fluid wave which will simply sweep the viscoelastic gel which is trapped behind the intraocular lens and may be a reason for next day inflammation and it is very important that this gel and cortex should be thoroughly washed to avoid any amount of post-operative inflammation and corneal haze next day. Forming the anterior chamber, it's a long tunnel, so it simply fuses and seals nicely. And this is the day, next day post-op picture. And we can appreciate that the cornea is crystal clear and there's no amount of keratitis in spite of such a hard cataract. And as I have said, the only contributory reason was that I chopped the pieces into smaller chunks so that removing them or emulsifying them did not involve any touching or invasion into the anterior chamber, touching the endothelium. If one can follow these things, I am sure that each one of us can have a crystal clear cornea in a hard cataract. Thank you.